In this video, I will talk about two studies focused on learning about the psychological and health effects human will experience when going to the Moon or Mars. This was motivated by the news that four crew members completed the first mission of the Crew Health and Performance Exploration Analog, or CHAPIA for short, on July 7, 2024. It was a 378 days affair where the crew experienced how it will be to live on Mars and the NASA used to gather data about the effects that an extended stay will have on the health and the cognitive performance of a small crew. The NASA habitat called Mars Dune Alpha was built considering the raw materials found on Mars and a reasonable size for the crew. The facility had 17 100 square feet with a living area that had private crew quarters, two bathrooms, a kitchen, and dedicated areas for medical examination, fitness, and work. We might ask, why is NASA doing this? Well, this is one of the many programs NASA is conducting to gather information on how crews will perform when they face significant workloads to support the habitat, conduct science and deal with problems and even possible equipment failures. Also to see how they will cope with the amount of water, limited food, small quarters, not seeing the blue skies on the earth and also the, the freedom to escape and enjoy the outdoors. But this is not the first project that put humans in these harsh conditions. Another project, Biosphere 2, was a project that on top of the two objectives that NASA mission had, also wanted to demonstrate the viability of the ecological systems on Earth to support and maintain humans' life in another planet and how it was affected by interaction between humans, farming, and technology. To do this, they built a 137,000 square foot facility with five different ecosystems, grounds to grow crops, some animals, and even insects and invertebrates. Biosphere 2 had a total of two missions. The first one had a crew with eight members who lived in this place for two years, from 1991 to 93. The second crew had seven members and it started in 1994. This mission, however, lasted only six months. NASA plans to carry out three CHAPIA missions, each with four people and lasting about one year. The first started in 2023 and the second will start in 25, while the last in 26. Focusing on the technology developed or used in these projects, we realized those were quite different. In the case of Chapia, because its focus was human factors, required only to build an isolated quarter for the crew. In this case, the, habit the habitat was small enough to build in a hangar at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. NASA used a 3D printing reddish building material to construct the facility and the choice of this technology intended to assess if it is an option that will eliminate the need to send large amounts of building material to Mars. Biosphere 2, on the other hand, was built 35 years ago with private funds, which makes its achievements even more amazing. Because of its dimensions and objectives, Biosphere 2 was built in Oracle, Arizona, and was made of a steel frame, a steel tubing, and high-performance glass to create a perfect airtight structure. Thinking about Earth, the team designed it so the production of oxygen and reduction of CO2 will be controlled by all the plants in the different biomes of the facility. The flow of air and temperature of the ecosystems were regulated using uh, closed loop pipes, air handlers, and a huge energy center. Because there was no flow of air with the outside world, the engineers had also to think about the ways to control the strong forces that a constant volume of air will produce in the day when it was heated and expanded, and then at night contracted. They ended up building a variable volume structure that acted as a diaphragm or lung, inflating and deflating as needed to maintain their pressure stable inside the facility through the day and night. When we started, we said that there were two common goals in these missions. And first, first we will talk about the health as is related to the availability of food for the crew on Mars. In the case of the Chapia mission, the crew ate packaged food like the food astronauts eat at the space station and supplemented it with the produce they grew in indoor home gardening systems. 
In Biosphere 2, it was more complicated because they had to grow their food and they realized that their fields didn't have enough light to produce all the food that they needed. Some papers indicated that the crew reported to be hungry at times. However, the medical markers indicated that the health during the two years was excellent. Now, focusing on the psychological uh, aspect, the only information we have now is from the Biosphere 2 mission, which indicated that the psychological aspect was a little more complex. It is said that the reduced oxygen and the restricted diet that was low in calories and nutrient dense contributed to the low morale and eventually divided the crew into factions. That might be one of the reasons, but compared to the world that we live in now, this seems to be more like a normal human nature and not very much related to the experience that they had inside the facility. If we compile a list of the things that work and didn't work, for the Biosphere 2 missions, we might realize that we learn a lot. Unfortunately, this was not a message going around at the time of these missions. The public criticized many aspects of the project. One of the most known was the injection of oxygen into the facility and the introduction of a CO2 scrubber, both to make up for the steady decline of oxygen that had become unsustainable halfway during the mission. This later was traced to the carbonation of the concrete that was, as they say, sequestering the carbon and contributing to the problem. The criticism, of course, was a clear lack of an under understanding and tolerance from the public about how experimentation and science works and how sometimes changes to the plans are permitted if that means that we will learn more and will make more discoveries. Unfortunately, these and other allegations contributed to the closing of the facility and with that missed an opportunity to learn more about how better prepared to live in outer space and more about how our Earth really works. Fortunately, Biosphere 2 did not disappear and it still operates as a research facility run by the University of Arizona. It now works as an open but controlled environment and is used to learn more about the biomes of Earth, the humans' effects in oceans, and even how to build a hydrophonic system for a space that can be used for colonies on the Moon and Mars. Putting in context the fate of Biosphere 2, I hope that we can learn everything that we learned from the Chapia project, what worked and what went wrong, and what NASA is planning to do to address it. Taking failures as opportunities to improve is how successful companies like SpaceX or organizations like NASA have achieved great things. We should be constantly reminded about the words of Thomas Edison when questioned about the failed experiments that led to the invention of the light bulb. He said, I have not failed 10,000 times. I have successfully found 10,000 ways that will not work. As a last note, NASA is still looking for volunteers for their third Chapia mission. So if you are interested, I recommend for you to go to their website. If you like the videos in this channel, please don't forget to subscribe.